Good. Well, I think um, it's half past ten. Um, we don't have that many people joining us at the minute, but I think probably we ought to get going because people will have this in their diaries. So, hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm director at Minerva here. Virginia and Amanda, do you want to just quickly introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Amanda and I've been involved in some of the sustainability webinars and I'm an account manager um, with the team at Minerva. And I'm Virginia Neal and I um, have been working on the Bio Voices project at Minerva um, as a project manager for the past three years. Thank you. And um, and we have with us um, B, and also we hopefully uh, will have uh, Molly as well contributing in the um, uh, during the morning this morning. Uh, so, Virginia, I think you're going to make me presenter and then I can start the slides. Good. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the UK launch of the BioVoices book for children uh, called the What's the Bioeconomy? Um, in fact, it's also for adults and children just as much uh, as well as for children, uh, because we all need to upgrade our understanding of uh, of of the bioeconomy uh, good so just to explain that the uh, book was launched if you like into the european market uh, last week um, but it is being produced in uh, 11 different languages uh, including english so we are launching the english version of the what's bioeconomy uh, book this morning so to explain uh, for those obviously live but also for those who will, will be watching this recorded uh, uh, version of the presentation. And just to let you know that it is being recorded uh, from now, that we will email those who've registered for the launch and asking you for your full details so that we can send you a copy of the book when it becomes available. And it should be available to us by the middle of uh, of April. We will be sending automatically one copy of the book to each of those who've registered to each of the email addresses. So if for any reason you have booked more than one copy of the book, we will need to ask you for the other contact details of who else will be receiving the book. Or if you work for an organisation, then please tell us about that. And explain what you will doing what you will be doing with the multiple copies of the book just to say that we don't have a huge number to give away of the free copies so we do need to justify where they're going so we cannot guarantee that if you ask for a large number that we will be able to fulfill that but we will obviously endeavor uh, endeavor to let you have uh, the number of books that, that you request just something about the book briefly, just to say that this is not a story book to be used at bedtime. It covers quite challenging and quite complex topics, but in an engaging way, which hopefully you'll see later on. And the aim of the book is to support us as adults to discuss and explore with our children some very complex issues. So we do see this very much as a daytime book, you know, to be shared not in one whole session, but in a number of sessions. And we hope that it will help you to engage with your children and to discuss and explore for yourselves uh, as much as for them. And you may be surprised what they know already, because certainly the, um, the feedback we've had is that already is that quite a lot of the topics are being covered uh, in school in one way or another. For example, the issue of plastics, pollution in the oceans, air pollution, air quality, and so on. So I'm just going to share with you now the uh, agenda. Uh, sorry, welcome, of course, to all of you, whether you're watching live or, uh, or via the recording. Here's the agenda briefly, hopefully. Here we go. So I'm going to share with you a video of some of the children's reaction that we've had so far to the book. Um, we're going to introduce you to the concept of the circular bioeconomy. We're going to have Molly and B with us hopefully live to discuss some aspects of the book. Um, we're then going to go through in detail and show you uh, uh, the book, the pages in the book that cover many different uh, topics and show you how it's been working in a very engaging way. We invite you to ask questions when you can via chat throughout the whole of the presentation, 
but there will be a Q&A session where you can obviously ask your questions uh, live. We're going to tell you a little bit about Minerva, my company, and the book and how we've been involved with the book and also the BioVoices project overall, and then point you to some other products that have been created by the BioVoices project partners, including ourselves, and then a wind up with a few final comments and, of course, any further questions that you'd like to pose to us. So you, we hope you have an enjoyable morning with us. We expect to just be with you for about an hour. So hopefully that will all go according to plan. If you have any technical issues, please do uh, put those into the chat box and we'll hopefully be able to sort those out uh, for you as we go along. So as part of the international launch last week, most of our partners who are based across Europe, in, across 10 different countries, were able to uh, interview and, uh, and collect a number of perspectives from, ch uh, from children about their first reaction to the book. And many of you may have seen this already, but we think it's a really good introduction as to what the book is all about. So we're going to run that little video for you. Do you think that milk can also be worn? Um, let's find yeah. out. Lift the flap. Oh, a soft and sustainable material can be made from the liquid left over from processing milk. I did not know that oh, either. either. I think you know more than me. My name is Molly. I'm five. I live in England. My favourite part of the book was the blueberry and tomato cream. Hola, me llamo María. Hola, me llamo Sofía. Yo tengo ocho años. Yo tengo seis años. Y las dos somos españolas. A mí lo que me gusta más es el lápiz con semillas, que puede eh, hacer un árbol y cosas. A mí lo que más me gusta del cuento ha sido una comba que puede saltar, que se hace a partir de plantas. Y las dos nos gusta cuidar el planeta. Hola, yo soy Santiago, tengo 7 años y soy de Portugal. Antigamente yo usaba esta escova de plástico y ahora uso esta escova de madera, que es muy más práctica do que de plástico. Ah, oye, yo soy un chico, a tu hijo te amo a mi roco. Ah, oye, yo soy un chico, a mi hijo te amo a mi roco, a mi Ciao, io mi chiamo Riccardo, non ti fa perdere, e a me mi piace affitturare e insegnare e frutta. Olá, io sono Matteo e tenho 7 anni e sono di Portugal. Io gostei molto del libro e quero studiare molto per un dia ser un grande scientista e inventar cose nuove. Ciao, ciao! Bueno, no me le meo. Esta es María. Soy de Romania. Am y soy de Romania. Usted es que bebe luz y pone la vuestra de dos años. Folosesco mucho y discute cosas degradables. Dacă no citís cartas de economía para copi. Me llamo Julia, o seis años. La parte que me piaciuta es quella del latte. Um, che lo, con, con gli scarti del latte si possono fare tante cose tipo delle magliette, dei pantaloni, insomma tante cose Sono Francesco e ho 5 anni A me mi piace la parte della buccia della mela che si fa carta, plastica, pelle delle borsette to invite my colleague now, uh, Virginia, uh, to just talk you through the concept of the bioeconomy and what we usually refer to the bio-based circular economy, which is really the basis of the content uh, for the Watts Bioeconomy book for children and indeed adults. Over to you, Virginia. So um, we know that the, the world economy is largely dependent on fossil resources. 
which are used to produce energy in all kinds of everyday products. Um, but these resources are now scarce and their continued use of them can harm the environment and our climate. So obviously we've got problems with plastics, we've got problems with um, polluted air, um, all to do with the burning um, and use of fossil fuels. Um, and obviously a big problem with um, fossil based waste which is very hard to get rid of without causing further damage to the, um, the climate and our general environment. So we know we have a major problem with climate change and we now need to make some pretty big decisions to move forward to stop um, or at least slow down our use of fossil fuels if we are going to meet the ambitious carbon reduction targets that our governments have set and to mitigate the effects of climate change. Now, Europe, um, the BioVoices project is um, an EU funded project. So um, we're very focused on the European um, aspect of the circular bioeconomy. But obviously this is a worldwide potential solution that can help us out with uh, reducing the effects of climate change. So the circular bioeconomy um, is um, a very, Sim here's a simple diagram that shows you that the, um, the bioeconomy uses biomass, so material of biological origin. Um, there's no fossil elements in here at all, and it is used in a, in a circular form. So basically it uses biomass from farming, forestry and aquaculture, such as fishing, um, whether it's seawater or freshwater, um, to produce crops. Um, which become feedstock, um, which can then be processed by ways such as biorefining or other novel or new ways. Um, and these biological um, materials from farming and forestry can be turned into food, feed, chemicals, bioenergy, biofuel. Obviously now aeroplanes and um, HGVs can run on um, biofuel, so very important for reducing our um, emissions, carbon emissions. So that, in a nutshell, is the bioeconomy. And this book, BioVoices, realises that unless a lot more people understand the concept of the circular bioeconomy, um, it's going to be difficult to take it forward. So the What's Bioeconomy book is the first step in for adults and the children they're talking to to you know understand more fully this potential solution to the challenges we face and um, have an enjoyable time learning about the bioeconomy. Um, so there's a very useful glossary at the end of the book which Rhonda will talk about um, which does explain again about biomass and about biorefineries. So um, you know, don't panic when you're reading the book to your kids because there will be um, some more information at the back of the book. So I hope that's helpful and um, sets the scene for Rhonda to talk you through the BioVoices book, What's Bioeconomy? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Virginia. I think one of the important things you said is that it should be enjoyable, that actually this is all about engagement, you know, between adults and children. Uh, in order for everybody to continue learning and understanding the concepts. Uh, so I'm going to hand you over to Amanda now and hopefully we've got B and Molly, there she is, are online. So over to you. Thanks, Rhonda. Hi B, hi Molly and, and thank you hi. so much for joining us. Hi Molly. <laughs> Obviously, um, we, we met up and um, I put together some mock copies of some of the pages within the book with all the different scenes and things in it. And we all sat down and had a look at the book and um, we thought it'd be really helpful for anyone currently with us and viewing the recording to understand from a, a parent's point of view and also from Molly's point of view, how she found the book. So um, <laughs> can you tell us how the What's Bioeconomy book um, B has been useful to introduce complex topics to uh, to Molly and sort of a, a child of Molly's age. Obviously, bearing in mind mm. that the book is aimed at um, children between five and eight years old. Yeah, no, it was actually it was really well pitched for her particular age group. So it was so bright and it was tactile. So obviously, she could move things around. But I mean, it turned out that she actually knew quite a bit more than 
than we realized and it was supporting things that she was learning at school but it wasn't instead of it being quite a removed concept of you know um reusing resources it talked about things in her everyday life you know um like fruits and vegetables and uh, yeah. seed pencils so it instead of being a, a concept that was far removed from anything she knew it was really rooted in things around the house things at school things in the garden so it was perfect and I discovered she'd actually been learning more about this at school than we'd first realized so yeah it was really enjoyable we were quite surprised actually in, in what she already knew about pollution and recycling that she'd been picking up on at school so it actually supported the curriculum so Molly what did you think of the book did you like the book do you want to tell Amanda what you've been doing this morning did you have you. a chance to look at the let's play oh <laughs> wow Molly <laughs> Our camera's frozen, but it smells, it looks slightly interesting, but I, I'm going to use it because it smells delicious. It's coffee and coconut scrub that yeah. we've created there. The let's, the let's play bit at the back of the book, was it included at the yeah. back? Yeah. Okay. And, and how do you think you'll be able to use the book in other ways going forward? Obviously, it's got the practical bits. Um, how, how else do you think you'll be able to use it going forward? Well, I think it's great because we need we can actually just dip in and out of it as these things come up so when she's got questions about um things going on at school um, we had a lady coming in to talk about plastics and changes you can make in your lifestyle and then you can go back to the book but obviously there's activities there's different questions so it's it's got a lot of life in it she's not going to discover everything about it um so it's just something you can refer to almost like a reference book for her age group Yes, and presumably, have, I mean, have you learnt more about the bioeconomy? Has it made you think differently about the more way of, of sustainable living? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and I've got some older children too, and it's coming up constantly in their science lessons, constantly in their sort of um, health and social care lessons at school. So. It's actually introduced the concept to me in a bit more detail because obviously I've gone and thought, well, actually, what is bioeconomy? What does it mean? And I probably wouldn't have looked at it in much more detail than what I thought I knew if I hadn't had the book as well. Yes, yes, of course. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Molly, for doing your experiments and telling us all you <laughs> know. And um, yeah, we'll uh, send you on your, you know, your first copy and. Uh, when it when it's available and um good good luck with everything going forward thank, thank you. you ah no problem thanks a lot um, Mo molly molly you must send us a photograph of your mummy when she has her face scrub on <laughs> she's going to use your coffee and what was it coffee and coconut i want to see whether you can do you think that will look yeah. funny yeah, yeah i think so <laughs> <laughs> that was <Awesome>. sunshine. <laughs> so I'll pass you over now to um, Rhonda, who's going to talk uh, a bit more about the, the 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 pages of the book and sort of what was involved. The floor is yours, Rhonda. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you very much, Amanda, and uh, thanks again to B and uh, and Molly. Uh, we look forward to hearing more about any of the uh, Let's Play experiments, uh, which I'm going to show you some more detail of uh, now. Uh, so, from a European perspective, this is the first book um, that we all believe has been done that really addresses uh, this big topic of the bots, what's bioeconomy for the children between the ages of five and eight. It covers five everyday situations for children, house, school, countryside, the seaside, and the city embracing supermarket and park. So I think, as you heard B say, what was so important uh, about Molly and B's uh, experience of the book is that it's about, you know, everyday life, something that's not removed from the children. It's something that they're going to be experiencing day by day in different environments and indeed uh, also reinforcing or uh, helping to reinvigorate information and experience of different topics. As we've indicated already, there is help here for adults as well. 
Uh, there's two pages that are called transversal topics. Uh, one is about the bioeconomy overall, which looks at what do we mean by the bioeconomy? How does it relate to our everyday life? And then also a very specific glossary uh, that can be utilized. There's also in that section uh, information about the scientific committee that has been engaged with looking at the content that we all as partners have contributed to just check its validity uh, and its relevance to driving the debate and discussion forward and indeed the knowledge within the younger generations about the bioeconomy. And we were very pleased that the cooperative group and their head of sustainability was part in the UK, was part of that scientific group. And he uh, has, is definitely endorsing the book uh, and we will be sending out a press release, including his quotes and his contribution in the, in the next week or so. Most importantly, from the children's perspective and also to help reinforce much of the information that's displayed in the book, there is a Let's Play section, which has a number of experiments uh, with a big disclaimer to obviously say that the children must, of course, have the permission and the support of uh, the adults around them in order to engage with those activities. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now, because we don't have the whole book as yet, we have PDFs of the actual pages. I'm going to take you through a PDF that gives you uh, the information uh, that's going to be, that is available in the book. So if you bear with me a moment, I'm going to take you through uh, the pages and give you some insight as to how uh, it works. Uh, you'll have heard uh, that Amanda very cleverly pieced the book together. Why did she need to do this? It's because each of the pages has got questions posed on each page with a flap to be opened up by the children with their adults to reveal an answer or more information about a particular topic. So this is the first page that the children will see uh, and poses the question about what's bioeconomy and what can I do, what can we all do in order to drive this new approach to sustainable living forward. And then for each of the pages, uh, it has flaps to provide more information. So these introductory pages introduce the fact that there's different scenes. As I've said already, there's a scene around the house, a scene around the city, around the seaside, the countryside, and indeed school, and indeed a gym at the school. And the aim here is to introduce this so that the children can then be motivated to turn the page and find the next page and discover the extra, extra information hidden below the flaps. So as we've said, this is another page that provides for the adults uh, more information to provide that background to make you feel more confident in the way that you're explaining information about the bioeconomy, about sustainability, and about the circularity that we all now need to aim at in terms of ensuring that we are repurposing, reusing, reducing any kind of waste and valorizing those residues in order to create new bio-based sustainable products. So here comes the first scene. Uh, this is the house and this is, you can see that this first page poses quite a number of different questions and different propositions. Some of them more generic, top right, wool, wood, hemp, grass and mushrooms are all natural fibres that can keep our place warm in winter and fresh in summer. Uh, I had a practical example of this not so long ago. Somebody sent me some very nice food uh, for, uh, for myself to try out, new Indian food recipes, and it all came wrapped in wool in order to keep it fresh and to keep it warm. And this is obviously a very natural fibre that can be utilised. And I've utilized, reutilized that wool that came in uh, to actually fill a cushion at home. So there's a very practical example of how something uh, natural can be utilized and repurposed in a number of ways. So here's the house setting. You can see that there are 
a number of rooms laid out. There's the bathroom, children's room, a balcony, uh, the living room, and obviously the kitchen. So what I'm going to do is just pick on one room. I'm going to pick on the bathroom. And you may have noticed that one of the children in the European uh, video that we, we showed, but you couldn't hear unfortunately earlier, was very keen uh, about brushing his teeth and what he used to brush his teeth. So if you look on the bathroom tab here, how do you brush your teeth? If we go down to the next part of the PDF, we can see that there is a tab that you open up, which talks about the use of plastic toothbrushes, which are not widely recyclable, and obviously being made of plastic take an enormous amount of time to decompose. Whereas you can now buy wooden toothbrushes in order to brush your teeth well, and which of course are much easier to recycle and much easier to decompose when you've finished using it. The other question in the bathroom scene that's posed is, what is a bio-based product? So again, if we go down to the tabs below, which you can open up to see, we then actually come to Molly's favorite, which was about the blueberry and tomato peels of those fruits, which can be used to make a face mask a face scrub. So this product itself is wholly or indeed partly renew, uh, derived from renewable biological resources, such as the peel from those fruits that I've just described. So this is rather like the face scrub that um, B and Molly are, have been making already, which hopefully we'll get a demonstration of at some point. But Molly liked this idea of the fact that uh, you can make a face cream from natural resources from these fruits, from blueberry and tomatoes. And if you go back to the house scene, if you look at all of these questions, some of the answers or think more things to consider will be revealed as you open up the tabs. Again, giving you a really core point and topic for you to discuss with your children. And as B said, this is not a book to go through in one go. This is something that can, you can go back to time and time again when a topic comes up, whether it's related to school, whether it's related to something the children see on television, or whether it's something that you, perhaps as a household, are beginning to think about differently. So here's the next scene. Here we are at school, which also for most uh, children, they'll be doing their PE at school. So there's a gym here. So again, there's a lot to take in. There's uh, the music room. Uh, there's the general learning room, there's lunch time, and there's the gym. So again, you can take all of these in one by one. You don't have to do it uh, all in one go. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to pick on the bottom left here. My notebook is made from animal poo. And if we go down, we can see uh, bottom right, uh, there is the circularity demonstrated about how animal poo, uh, and we know it can be collected from elephants, horses and cattle in order to make paper. And certainly in the Minerva office, we have some very good examples of this. And we often send special letters out to very special people printed on our elephant poo paper. And in fact, for elephants, we know that paper has been made this way for a very, very long time. But technology, technology is now allowing us to utilize dung from other animals and to produce it at scale. Hence, we're able to uh, utilize this natural resource in a much more effective way and to reduce perhaps our reliance on more chemically produced paper, which obviously is also, it's always important to look to check that the paper you're using comes from a recycled source. So let's go back to school and let's. Uh, look at the right hand side to the gym. Bottom right here, we have obviously a youngster who's having a lesson in judo and he's saying, I'm the black belt of stinky socks. And if we go back again to the tabs, uh, we can see that here's that, here comes that coffee grounds again. Coffee grounds can be used and definitely are being used to make anti smell sportswear, including socks. 
And as we know, if people don't change their socks often enough, or we forget to wash our feet as often as we should, then obviously rather smelly feet can be the outcome of that. So again, a, uh, there's huge amounts of coffee grounds uh, now being created, whether it's at home or whether it's in a coffee bar, uh, and these can now be collected and technology is allowing us to utilize those grounds to create new uh, materials with special qualities that help to reduce the smell uh, of used socks. And we're sure in that scene that the children will pick up on the two uh, aspects of things to do with um, things that are very smelly and are very easy to smile about. So let's move to the next scene, which is the countryside. Here we see a number of images of children engaged with a number of activities, including, well, we have somebody in winemaking. We have others involved in feeding the, the, the cows to create the milk. We have children playing games with a skipping rope. We have children obviously also helping with, with growing things. And I'm sure those, uh, those of us who are able to know that it's very engaging for children to be involved in sowing seeds and watching them grow. It's just the right time of year to do that. So again, just to choose a couple of things to demonstrate to you how this book works. Do you think milk can also be worn? And this was one of the questions that came up with Bee and Molly very early on. And we know also from the European video that a couple of the other children were also very fascinated by this idea. Do we really think that milk can also be worn? And if we go down, we now know that again, with technology, advances in technology and innovation, that the li liquid left over from processing milk that we all utilize every day for drinking or for cooking, that that liquid, that residue, is not a waste at all, in the sense that it can now be utilized to create a soft and sustainable material. And you may very well see now, uh, alongside clothes that are made from bamboo um, and other natural fibers, you will also see that there are clothes and soft materials in clothes that are made from the residue from milk processing. Just going back to countryside, if you look bottom right, have you ever blown on a dandelion seed head? I'm sure we've all done that. I mean, from my childhood, it was supposedly you could tell the time. I don't know whether that is still held in order to tell the children that if you blow on a dandelion head and there's only three left, it's going to be three o'clock. Not sure how accurate or how scientific that is, but it's always been fun. But if we go down to the tabs underneath that, we can see that dandelion roots contain a gum uh, that can be used mixed in with other elements to make car tires. So this is another utilization. We know how dandelions spread during the summer and we know now that they're actually grown for this purpose as well as for other purposes. That dandelion roots can contain that gum which can be utilized in this way. I think one of the things about the book is that it helps us think, think about different topics, different products, different things all around us that can be utilized in different ways. And I think that's one of the things that children pick up on so quickly, isn't it? Uh, you know, they do think differently from us because they're not pre-programmed. Here comes the seaside scene. Goodness, well, hopefully many of us have been able to get down to the seaside now. We're able to travel a little bit more. Some of us are lucky enough to live by the sea already. But unfortunately, I think we all know that the seaside, uh, both the ocean itself and the sea, the sand areas, the dunes and so on, are under, under threat from a number of different, uh, from a different causes. Most of them of our own doing. Firstly, we know uh, that within the oceans, uh, there's millions of microorganisms organisms which are uh, in there now because of things like um, things that we've left or thrown overboard or have washed into the sea from litter that we've, we've left by on the beaches when we've not been careful enough or indeed through our washing. So I think there's things for us to be thinking about very much around that. But we certainly know that children in school uh, will have been focusing on the issue of plastics and that we know that plastics, there's a huge issue of plastics polluting our seas. 
So if we look down under the tab for plastics polluting our seas, we can see that all of the things that tend to go into the sea can be and must not go into there, of course, uh, but obviously they can be created from different materials which can be which do biodegrade and don't actually pollute in the same way. The other thing that we also know is there's huge fishing uh, issues. What can we do with fishing waste? And this might be with our own fishing trips or our big trawlers that are uh, that are um, trawling the uh, ocean depths uh, to the detriment of the health of the oceans, but also the small things that we can do ourselves uh, regarding how we dispose of the waste uh, when we eat fish, for example. So the fishing waste that can be utilized at an industrial level is absolutely immense. We know that Iceland, the country Iceland, which is a big, big fishing nation, um, has very strong and very well adhered to rules uh, regarding the fish that they land and what happens to the waste, because we know that this fish, these fish residues can be utilized for many practical purposes. Food supplements through omega-3, it's an active ingredient in sunscreens that you can buy now. It can be used for building, uh, in building, and Iceland, they're certainly utilizing it in that way. And in terms of fashion accessories, in terms of the, the bones, for example, uh, in a very craft sense as well, can be utilized, as well as in cosmetics and pharma. So the seaside, I think, uh, which we can all relate to, I think, uh, is one picture of our environment that is so important for us to be thinking about. And let's ensure that we all adhere to the non-littering, the non uh, the non leaving of residues that can be harmful, whether it's directly for uh, wildlife that live in the sand dunes or on the beach, or more indirectly in the sea, we all need to play our part in ensuring that we keep this environment as safe as possible. So here is the final scene, which is called the city and embraces the supermarket, which obviously is a huge area for uh, for us all to be thinking about and which our children can obviously experience with us. Uh, the city includes obviously the roads, the aeroplanes that fly overhead, as well as of course more of a natural environment within the parks. So again, just to pull out a couple of examples here. In the park, there's, there's somebody enjoying the swing and the seat is made from, what is it made from? So here top left, uh, this one in particular was made from garden pruning waste. So no tree was actually cut down to make this swing. It can be made out of other parts of a tree uh, or, wooden, uh, uh, or, or wooden production so that it's not actually uh, contributing to the, to the growth and then what you might call the cut down or the destruction of trees. So it's about mindful ways in which we can utilize waste uh, in many ways. And then the second topic to draw attention to is does the bio-based economy contribute to fighting pollution? And we're sure that many children in school will have been talking about air quality, talking about pollution from cars and indeed air pollution. And of course one of the things that we know has been under scrutiny for a long time is how can we reduce, if you like, the, the impact that our air miles the number of times we fly and the aeroplanes that we use, how can we ensure that we are not contributing too much to the pollution in the air? And yes, we now we do know, and it is in use, that we can use renewable biological resources in order to create biofuel. And Virginia mentioned this early on uh, in our presentation this morning. If we use biofuels, uh, we reduce our dependency on petrol, which is obviously made from fossil fuels and obviously is highly polluting, whether it's petrol or whether it's actually diesel. So two topics there to, uh, to really uh, think about and to raise with the children. As you can see, there's lots of information. So again, don't consider that this is a, a five minute picture book. This is a book to explore and discuss. And then perhaps for the children, this is the most, uh, perhaps one of the most interesting parts of the book, 
It's about the experiments. Uh, we've already heard that uh, that Molly with B has been making the um, the coffee scrub, but there's others. There's about a biogas factory that you can make in a bottle. You can make homemade biodegradable pots, which can be used 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 for all kinds of things. It's about coloring with purple, the purple cabbage experiment, different colors, different uses, and different topics that can be used. Seed balls here I can see that are being thrown from the tree by, by somebody who's obviously done that experiment. So just to show you an example, what does this biogas factory in a bottle, what's that all about? Let me see if I can find it. Here it is, that down the bottom of this part of the PDF that's showing you what's under the flaps. You have to half fill a glass bottle with water. You need to add two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of brewer's yeast, cover with your hand and shake it. And if you were then to stretch a balloon over the neck of the bottle, after a few minutes, the balloon will blow up. And that's because your balloon has filled up with biogas which again we know is something that's being utilized in different production and technology sectors in order to support more bio-based uh, innovation. So there's that one, which is really important, of course, that children don't do this on their own. Um, there's the coffee scrub, which we've heard all about uh, already from Molly. So you mix two tablespoons of used coffee grounds, we've all got those in our house, with one tablespoon of oil, and then you mix it all together and you use it as a gentle scrub for your body and face. And there's other uses for coffee grounds, which if you look through the book, you'll find out that there are other uses for coffee grounds as well. So lots here again to explore, again, not in one go, but to think about introducing over a period of time. Here's this important glossary to help you to think about and be able to explain in more accessible terms, biomass, biorefinery, the, the, um, the, the concepts of items that are combustible or biodegradable, which are the things that do need an industri more of an industrial process in order to break down and reuse, and also how this all fits into our need to think about how we're going to mitigate against climate change, which is obviously something that uh, we've all contributed to. The book has taken quite a while uh, to develop. Um, there's been concepts, there's been uh, consultation, and the result is as you see it now. As I said earlier, we don't have the books in our position, possession as yet, but it's all being printed now, it's all been signed off, and we hope to have uh, the books uh, with us in about two weeks' time for us to be able to then distribute on to, our, to those who've registered with us, with us and have requested copies. So that's the PDF showing you the main scenes and also the exciting information and discussion points once you lift the flaps. So we're going to go back to our slide deck here and just ask if anybody at this point has got um, any questions. Do you have any questions in chat or questions that have been submitted to us in advance? Um, yes, I have one um, here, which is how is the book being ma made available um, in the UK and elsewhere? And is it available in any other languages? OK, uh, Virginia, do you want to answer that? Um, yes, well, the um, book has been or will be printed in 11 languages, obviously to try and engage as many people as possible um, around Europe and the world. So uh, they will be available by through Bio Voices or via Minerva. There will be some information on the final slide. Uh, and if anybody's interested in obtaining copies in different languages, we can point them in the right direction of how, how they can obtain these. Uh, Portuguese, I can name just a few. Uh, Estonian, Italian, German, Hungarian, I think, to, to name just a few of the different languages that are being used. Good. Thank, thank you very much, Virginia. Uh, it's been a big effort, hasn't it, getting it all, getting it all translated. And um, uh, this is really important because we know that collaboration and joint thinking as well as joint working is going to be so important to help us uh, challenge uh, the big issues that are brought up through the book. Any more yes. questions? 
I know that B's asked a, a question. B, I'm not sure if you'd like to ask the question or you'd like me to do it on your behalf. If you want to unmute yourself, you could ask the question. Oh, hi there. Yeah, I just wondered if there's any sort of initiative to get this uh, type of topic more formally on the curriculum for Molly's age group, um, because the way that the book works makes it much more accessible to them. But it also it just seems like a great opportunity because when you're making things like biogas, you've got um, you can get science, you can get maths involved in the in, you know, tie it in with this book in the curriculum. And I just wondered if there's any initiative out there to do that for Molly's age group. Mm. That's, a, that's a great question, uh, B. Um, interestingly, this book wasn't on our list for the BioVoices uh, product right at the beginning, uh, project right at the beginning. It actually has come about because the project has been extended by a number of months because we were not able to complete quite a lot of the work because of the COVID situation. So mm -hmm. from the UK perspective, this has been something that's uh, this is this is something that sort of come onto the horizon quite late. But no, I think this is something that we should get into. And we know that various schools will make this available. Uh, so one of the things that I have on my list is to talk to um, the education authority to see whether this can be you know, can be taken up as something that they can promote. But we mm -hmm. haven't been able to progress that now, but we ho hope that we will be able to because we think this is a very valuable resource. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, B, for asking that very important question. Do we have any more? We, we um, have one more. How was yeah. the content of the book selected and validated? Ah, um, important, important. Um, so, Minerva, because we are the uh, English speaking partner within BioVoices, the book actually started from an English standpoint. So uh, we were able to uh, to work with our two Italian partners. In fact, it sort of came out of discussion at the Italian level with one with, with two partners based in Rome, both of whom have young children, both of whom are involved in a number of projects around the whole topic of sustainability and the bio-based economy. And they definitely spotted a gap, if you like, in the Italian market for a book of this kind. So that's where it originated. Uh, the content then uh, was discussed and the concept was discussed with illustrators as well as with um, content uh, producers because as we know, all children's books have got to be very, very visual, uh, very engaging. So hence the selection of the illustrators who work with Usborne books. And I'm sure we can all see the, um, see, see the familiarity of that kind of style. We weren't so involved in the validation side, but the project, the BioVoices project coordinator with um, their other Italian partner brought together uh, a scientific committee um, of, I think it was nearly 30 individuals who got involved in one way or another. Some of them are based at a European level. So as this is a European funded project, we have the European Commission, various members of the European Parliament and a number of committees there were engaged with this, as well as individual experts who are involved in particular aspects of the bio-based economy. And as I said earlier, we were pleased that the head of, of sustainability, for the cooperative group here in the UK, were very involved in seeing the form of words as well as the images that were created. So it had to be selective, of course, we can't cover everything. But I think this scenario approach, you know, school, the city, the seaside, the home, is a very useful device to then introduce a certain number of, of different concepts and different topics. Virginia, uh, do you want to add anything to that? Well, I think it's it's a huge opportunity, this book, to um, to widen and raise awareness of the bioeconomy, um, which is, is um, or has been quite a complex uh, concept to explain to people. And this book, I think, is going to be really, really helpful for adults and children alike to move the whole situation forward and really grasp the uh, huge potential of the bio circular bioeconomy to 
to help us um, combat climate change and other major issues that we are facing. Mm. Yeah, and and obviously, you know, young minds, new minds, you know, a different way of thinking um, is is really important in the whole of this process. Uh, really? So, um, yeah, and the um, and just remember that the purpose of this book uh, is obviously to raise debate and discussion. It doesn't necessarily provide all the solutions, um, but provides uh, food for thought or different bio-based materials for thought uh, in order for us to. Uh, have more informed decision making going forward, whether it's at the industrial scale or indeed at the private scale. Good. Any more? Any more questions? Or shall we move on? No, there's nothing more. To move on. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm just going to say a very. Uh, I think I've introduced this already. Uh, Minerva, my company, and Virginia and Amanda obviously work alongside me at Minerva. We are the UK partner for the BioVoices project, and you can find more information about um, the project on our own website. And if you need more information about Minerva itself and our involvement in the whole topic of sustainability and the bio-based sector and its approach to working towards solutions to some of the major uh, topics confronting us, then don't hesitate to, to be in touch. I'm going to hand you over to Virginia now, just to introduce you to two or three more products that the BioVoices project has generated, again, to keep the debate going, to put in front of us some more uh, imag imaginative and visual ways of thinking uh, about the bio-based circular economy. So over to you, Virginia. OK, thank you, Rhonda. Um, yes, we've been at Minerva. We've been working on the BioVoices project for the past three years. Um, and the ultimate aim of the BioVoices project is to um, identify the challenges, because we know that there are challenges to the wider uptake of bio-based products. Uh, it's largely due to uh, confusion and maybe the language used to describe the circular bio-based economy. So this book is going to go a long way to um, mitigating that confusion. And we wanted, with the BioVoices project and our partners from 10 other European countries, to maximise the engagement of people from all areas of society um, to drive the debate and discussion forward about the potential benefits of bio-based products and the circular bioeconomy. And the BioVoices website, which is, is mentioned here, the www.biovoices.e.eu, um, contains a wide variety of, of really useful um, visual materials um, which you can access for free um, and explore the potential of the bioeconomy and some under, un, uncover some surprising facts about everyday plants and um, other bio-based uh, products. So um, one of the first items that BioVoices produced was a bio art gallery. Um, now it's also available in video form uh, on the BioVoices YouTube channel. But here we've just got a, an image taken from the BioVoices website, which shows you some olives, and then it invites you to click onto the next page. So if I could have the next slide, Rhonda, please. Thank you. And then it goes on to, give you a description of what olives can be used for and it's not just for making olive oil obviously there's um, waste um, from production of olive oil and that waste can be used to uh, prepare all sorts of other um, useful products so nothing is wasted so uh, it features tomatoes thistles cardoons and um, surprising applications of these plants so do visit the biovoices website you could have the next slide please Obviously, BioVoices, the, um, one of the main aims has been to engage the wider public uh, in the debate and discussion about the potential and uses of the bio-based products and the bioeconomy. And they've had a big social media programme on Instagram and Twitter. And again, these are available on the BioVoices website for you to look at. And it's again showing examples of bio-based products and their everyday uses in, in people's everyday lives, just to make things, it's much more practical, which again is what the book, What's Bioeconomy aims to do, 
to put the bioeconomy and bio-based products firmly within people's everyday lives and within their reach. And the other way that um, BioVoices has um, done this is to use gaming as a a technique to reach again widen the reach of the bioeconomy so this game is also available on the biovoices website and here are a couple of examples of the questions and uh, can be asked um, it's, it's interactive so you can drag your questions into the basket in the first piece of uh, first slide there and then um, there are various questions that you are asked and you can click on them and it will tell you if you're right or wrong. So very informative and useful and again can be um, done with adults and children such as the book can be used as well. So um, yes, a lot of really good products have been designed. So moving back to Rhonda, thank you very much. Thank you very much Virginia and just to say that uh, because all of this material has been created utilising public funds, these uh, materials are all available to use for free. So don't hesitate if you have an interest in looking at what's available and thinking about how you could use this either privately or with a group, then you are very free to do so. And of course, Minerva will be very happy to help you with that if you have any requests regarding that. So uh, mainly for those who are watching the recording, just to say uh, that if you are watching the re recording to receive your English language copy of the book, please send an email to info at minervacoms.net. Please provide your name, information about your organisation if that's applicable. Include your email, telephone and your postal address. <clears throat> and we will certainly send you one copy. If you think you can make use of more than one copy, then please do request them and actually state what you'll be using those books for. So maybe you're part of a I don't know, a preschool group, and you think that five copies would be really nice for you to have so that it's not just one, or indeed you're a teacher and this is a topic that comes up in your school and you think you need, uh, and you definitely need more than one, we'd be very happy to see if we can accommodate that. But, uh, and that the same rules obviously apply to those who are watching live or who have registered. Uh, but as I've said at the top of the, uh, top of the presentation, uh, we will be sending you an email anyway with your link to the recording. And the recording, of course, will be promoted via the press release that we're sending out and also via uh, our website. So we hope that we can spread the word that way. But we know word of mouth is important here. So please don't forget to tell your friends, uh, tell the, the parents of your children's school chums if, this, if you think this will be of interest to them. Uh, as Virginia mentioned earlier, uh, and in the answer to the question, copies of the other languages are available, but you need to go through a different route to request them in any other language via the link that's shown here. And we have been promoting it book uh, via the Minerva social channels, as well as the uh, BioVoices channels as well. So do stay in touch with all the information that's going to be coming out. Uh, so final comments and uh, and any final questions before we wrap this up? Virginia, do you want a, one final comment from you? One final comment. Okay, um, well, having worked on the BioVoices project for the past three years, um, I'm very excited to see the launch of this book because it, you know, it really does has taken into account all of the challenges that we've identified um, to do with um, taking forward the bioeconomy and by bio, the potential of bio-based products and um, I think it, it, it's a really a great product for um, adults and children to use to to learn and inspire their friends and to hopefully uh, take the bioeconomy forward so that we can really make a difference. Thank you Virginia. B, are you still with us? Would you like to make any final comment? Hi there, yeah, I'm still here. Um, I just, just wanted to say thank you for including me on the project. It's actually been really interesting and as something that keeps coming up time and time again with my older children, it's nice to see it being addressed at Molly's age group as well. Um, so yeah, just thank you very much for including me and I can't wait to see what else comes of the project. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, B, and also thank you to, to Molly. And uh, obviously you'll be our VIP person to receive the first books we get off, hot off the press. Brilliant. Very excited. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, do you, would you like to make any final comment? 
I think I would just really reiterate um, both both the points that Virginia and um, B made. In you know, as a as a parent, it is an issue that's that I am uh, I'm passionate about myself, um, and would hope that my children would follow in that same vein. And I think it's a, a really important area. And I'm glad to see that uh, initiatives like this are are around. And the book, I think, will, as B said, definitely help younger younger people and their grandparents, parents, teachers, adults alike, just to get a better understanding and obviously, hopefully, you know, help us all build a sustainable world going forward. Good. Thank you. Some great, great comments there. Thank you all very much indeed. So I'm going to bring this to, to a close, but first, just to uh, acknowledge uh, the support and work of all of our uh, partners across Europe in the BioVoices pro um, project, from APRI, who uh, top top left, who are the coordinators of the project based in Rome, uh, to um, ICLE based in Germany, to QPlan based in, in Greece, to LOBA in Portugal, to PEDAL in Slovakia. We've all really enjoyed our working together on this important topic and uh, we do expect uh, the products coming out of BioVoices to be utilised in many different ways and in new projects going forward. So thank you all very much indeed. Thank you for those who've attended live. Uh, thank you for all of you who are going, who are watching now in recorded mode. If you have any issues or questions or ideas about how the book or other BioVoices products can be utilised, don't hesitate to be in touch either via telephone as shown here or by uh, email. So I'm now going to call this to a close and thank you all very much indeed for attending uh, the UK launch of the children and adults book, What's Bioeconomy? Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>